Hey guys, what's up? Spenny here. Uh, so I haven't used my camera in the last couple of weeks. I've actually been on the road. I just bought some real estate up here in Canada. So I've been in and out of hotels and just didn't bother with the camera. Uh, but in today's video, I have a really exciting one for you. So we are going to value Palantir 10 years out and we're going to value it using Warren Buffett's methods. So I've read the book and this was actually the first investment book I've ever read. It's uh, seven secrets to investing like Warren Buffett. Now this book is literally a math textbook essentially. The whole time reading it, you're going to be taking notes, writing down different formulas. And it's really useful when you do want to properly value a company and not just speculate on where the price could be. So I'm going to use this book to value Palantir 10 years out, similar to how Warren Buffett would do it himself. Now, obviously I'm not Warren Buffett, not pretending to, but I am going to give you guys a very realistic situation, actually multiple situations on where the market cap could be. It's really important to understand Palantir and be realistic about where the price could be 10 years out. But I think you guys are actually going to be very pleasantly surprised. Uh, before we do get into this video though, make sure to drop it a big thumbs up if you find it informative and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. First thing to understand is returns from a stock are proportional to the earnings over time. If the stock appreciates faster than revenue and or earnings, it is just becoming more and more overvalued. You're paying a higher price for the stock while the amount of money it produces isn't growing as fast. This won't continue forever, but this does occur very often and can lead to bubbles, such as when Palantir shot up to nearly $45 a share, then crashed back down to 20. So to be realistic, when you're wanting to see a stock price increase 50% within a few months without the earnings and or revenue growing at that rate, you're asking for something that is mathematically impossible and it can't be sustainable for over the long term. The exceptions is to this is when a stock has been mispriced. Uh, think Tesla for an example. That stock was way under its fair value and uh, there's lots of examples like that in the stock market. But in today's situation, we are going to assume Palantir is fair value. So I have three situations I'm going to run through with you guys. First one is here. So Palantir will return 50% year over year for the next 10 years. If that were to occur, we'd go from $24 a share to $13.93 and that's not including dilution. So obviously the stock will be diluted. It'd actually be less than this. But for the purpose of explaining the valuation, we're not going to include dilution. Uh, it's really easy to throw that in if you wanted to. But if we grow at a 50% year over year, uh, the actual stock price, it'll be $13.93 in 10 years. It's pretty insane. So to figure out the market cap, we've got to go $13.93 times 1.47 billion shares. That's outstanding. That gives us a $2 trillion market cap. Um, now, don't get too excited yet. I'm going to be running through some more situations and see what's realistic. So if Palantir revenue grows at 50% year over year for the next 10 years as well, it would be producing 57 billion in revenue. And at a price of sales of 40, which it's currently valued at, the market cap would be around 2.2 trillion, uh, you know, 2 trillion to 2.2 trillion. The math isn't exactly uh, but right around the two trillion. So some of you are probably surprised to see a two trillion dollar market cap if we grow at that rate. Uh, yeah, 50% year over year is nuts. It's absolutely crazy. Not many stocks can do that. Um, let's give some other situations here though. So if penalty returns 30% year over year for 10 years, the share price would go from $24 to 330 a share, not including dilution. It's crazy that just that 20% year over year difference, you go from 1393 a share to 330 a share. Uh, that's the power of compound interest. Insane. So moving on though. So Palantir revenue grows at 30% year over year for 10 years. Then Palantir will be producing 13.7 billion in revenue. If we times that by a 40 price to sales ratio, that's a 548 million market cap, which would still be about a 12 X return over the next 10 years. Obviously this isn't accounting for a dilution. So keep that in mind. Um, now in order to see long-term results such as these revenue and earnings need to grow at a similar rate to the stock price. So you can't have the stock 
just absolutely skyrocketing over the long term without the revenue and earnings and margins all increasing as well. All that does is create the stock to become more and more overvalued and it's not sustainable. It leads to a bubble and eventually the stock will crash. Now here's my example why. If the stock appreciates 50% year over year for 10 years, the market cap would be around 2 trillion. We already established that in my first example. However, if the company only grew its revenue at 30%, we would be producing 13.7 billion revenue. Now, in order to figure out our price to sales ratio, we go 2 trillion, so that's the 2 trillion market cap, divided by 13.7 billion, the revenue, we would get a price to sales ratio of 145, which would be very unrealistic. Uh, this would be grossly overpriced 10 years out for us to be trading at 145 price to sales ratio while we're only growing revenue at 30%. Um, so you can see the stock would just become grossly overvalued if we don't have that revenue and earnings growth over the long term. So if you are a long term investor, you don't wanna see the stock appreciate in value way faster than earnings and revenue does. It's just becoming more overvalued and you're inevitably going to see a correction. Now, of course, there are some exceptions to this. The stock market does misprice stocks and there could also be some really big upcoming catalysts that are gonna be priced into the future but we're not pricing stuff into the future in this example. We're looking at fair present day value. So anyways, guys, I hope you got some value out of this video. Um, it's really not unrealistic to see a $500 million market cap 10 years out, because um, obviously we do have to account for dilution, but I do actually expect Palantir to grow between 30 and 50% over the next decade. When you account for a dilution in that as well, yeah, we're probably looking close to a, you know, $1 trillion company. Maybe it's 500 million, maybe it's a trillion, maybe it's 1.5 trillion. We don't know how the stock market is going to value this company. We don't know what the margins are gonna be. We don't know the exact amount of dilution. We don't know what interest rates are gonna be at. There's a lot of variables that you can't account for, but it's definitely not out of the possibility to see a $1 trillion market cap. Um, anyways, guys, hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe to see more content like this. Uh, make sure to comment down below. Let me know your guys' thoughts around this. I would love to hear what you guys think. Anyways, thanks for watching until the end. I'll see you guys on the next video.